very impressed with uh, with your with your shape, man. That you achieved uh, for fifty. But you looked like this the whole time, though. Nah, you know what? I did do a I did do a nice stint, and people like you motivate me, man. You know, it's like you say the <laughs> crazy shape. It's like you always say, I'm getting smaller, and I know you said you were back to training. I think yes, I saw a couple. Yes, of yes, ago. yes. Uh, but you know, I wanted to do something really cool to kind of engage my community and and show hey it's been 10 years since i quit you know 2013 was the last year so it was literally like it was i think like two weeks ago was the official like 10 year mark mm. and uh you know like you said i stay in i love to train so i stay in decent shape but i really wanted to you know add some cardio in there and try to fill up a little bit of course milos milos didn't approve of how big <laughs> i actually got he was like man you need to be <laughs> Yeah. How, hey, what was I your saw him yesterday? How much that weight? Is, is, how much weight did you put on? In that face. Actually, so I started at two forty five and I ended at two thirty. So I dropped weight, but I feel like I gathered a little fullness, and you know, I was obviously more conditioned. But I, it wasn't about gaining weight because I really didn't want it. You know, being two forty five, it's just really not necessary. My right. goal was to really land about two thirty, two thirty five, and. You know, I did it without a ton of substance, which it was the food was the hard part, man. Back to six meals a day. See, I can't do it no more. That is work. Yeah. And I was hungry for it. But the time factor, especially traveling and everything else, and I was really busy during that stint the last few weeks, that was the biggest challenge for me, even though, you know, I have the trifecta food and all that. It just, it, it just, that meal planning, mm. you don't realize how strict you are and you know, you were a twice a day trainer too, right? I mean, we train twice yeah. a day and it's like, we, no one does that anymore. And that's something I would have liked to have done because I feel it could have really, it got me that much further, but that thing, once a timetable, it's like trying to run business and travel. And, you know, once I started to become super popular, it threw me way off on that double split training, which I feel is a great benefit to work your way to the top. I mean, that's what we did as a living. It's yeah. Yeah, we are full time bodybuilding. And that's where I feel like today. It's like people are afraid to train for too long. I don't get it. Mm. So if how how is your appetite, though? Because you said you went back to six meals. Do you are you hungry six times a day? Because I was doing fasted one full hour in the morning of cardio. Okay. And I did 30 minutes in the evening. So that really sped up my metabolism. And remember, I'm not trying to feed a 289 right. pound body. So right? smaller meals. So, yeah, smaller portionate meals, right? Mm. So he, so he right jack. huh? Yeah, yes. He, he looked jack. Yesterday I've seen him like you know that bursting full chest, right? But then super flat stomach. Uh, you know, the, always he all Jay always had a flat stomach. I don't you know, I, I, I don't think I don't think I've ever seen Jay with a distended stomach. I don't even care if he was yeah, eating one three pizzas. Two thousand five, Dennis. Right. But that was that was probably when you when you turned around and did your back double. No, no, it was, I, just, I had trouble I had trouble, you know. I, I carved up on oatmeal that year and it just it gave me it just wasn't digesting that well. Uh. It was something different i did and it bloated me for sure yeah that's the time they were touching each other's legs him and ronnie and all yeah that yeah stuff. yeah but yeah but i'm i'm talking about bloat like i was bloated you know what i'm saying i'm talking about that kind of bloat i'm talking <laughs> about i'm talking about not being able to see your feet <laughs> well you know we we did tend to overeat i feel yeah. as we progressed and you know, I was talking to to Milos yesterday and giving credit to like Sean, even Chris, you're on here, um, Dexter. Like, I feel like those guys didn't try to chase anything else. They they kind of they were criticized to being like, oh, they always look the same. But that same was dominating. Yeah, right. And it that's was a good. They, it was the great same. Yeah. Yeah. Sean, man, like, Sean Ray is the same. I mean, he was people keep criticized him a lot for never changing. I mean, that's a good thing. If you could, cons you know, consistently come in great. What you need to change for? I mean, you know? Chris, Chris, the same thing with Chris. Yeah. Chris, you've never really chased the mass game and no. you knew what your strengths were. And I mean, if you look at the career, it's it's the consistency you had, right? And that's what you look at now in the retirement years and they look at the greats and they say, man, the consistency, because that's the hardest part is to stay constant with what we do and, and have yeah. success that way. Yeah. You know, so are you back to full eating regular meals or still six meals a day? Four meals a day. I mean, I, I think I've actually probably put on a little weight and lost a little bit of the the lean 
the lean mass I had, but I like, I got up this morning, did 45 minutes of cardio and mm. I still at least do 40 minutes. I I'm not really pushing an hour now. And honestly, the meals aren't as necessarily as clean and they're not as, uh, as frequent. I don't know how you guys feel, but for me, I used to, I used to be a huge eater. I could, I could, I was able to eat like every hour. If you would have told me you got to eat a meal every hour, that would have been no problem. Now, no, yeah. Problem. <laughs> no, I was I could never listen, eat like that. I could, yeah, you, I could, that's there. I could literally eat, and I, I'm gonna give you an example: a meal that consists of three cups of rice and 14 ounces of meat. Okay, <laughs> and then I'm hungry. When I'm done, I'm gonna ask for another cup of rice. Just to top, just to top it off, like a dessert, almost. And I, like this, I was able to eat. That's why I got so big because I was able to put food down. Because people, you know how people are. Oh yeah, he's using the fucking gear to the max, and it no, it was literally the food. It, it went everywhere, but I, you know, I, I gained size. But right now, I'm at a point where I have a hard time getting four meals in. So for me to get four meals, I got to wake up at six, and I'm going to drink a shake at at, at seven. And I have breakfast at 10. And then I have another meal before I train and dinner. That's it. Three meals and a shake. It counts as a meal, yeah? Yeah. Because well, the shake, I put, I put oatmeal in, you know, almond milk, oatmeal, and uh, almond butter. And I, I put some calories in there. But, well, other, than that, other than that, after 6, I have a hard time. I have no more appetite after 6, 6.30. PM? No shit. I'm that's, telling you, no appetite. I can go without food from six, from five o'clock on, no problem. Uh, Jay, uh, Jay, remember the back in the day they had the rankings of uh, all the competitors in the in the back of the magazine. Were you like invested in that? Yeah. Uh, uh, mentally, or were you like, were you like, how would, how did you feel about that, and, and did you get in, involved in that too much? I don't know if I was ever high on that ranking, though, Chris, until, <laughs> you know, I always looked up to all you guys, and I, I mean. Were you checking it out? Of course. Yeah. Every, course. Everybody. <laughs> yeah. You know, you just you just brought it up to me, and I just, I totally forgot about it. It's just so much that we've gone through, like, the earlier media outlets and the conversations, and, I mean, we talk about magazines and that's like a, such a thing of the past. I mean, I, I mention it to all these these kids nowadays that come see, see me at events and they have no idea what I'm talking about. Their parents, you know, were fans, right? Mm -hmm. So they follow the books. And I think people are a little, uh, I think th they don't realize the what they have in front of them with these videos. And I mean, remember we used to do the DVDs, right? And those were like a huge outlet for people to learn. And nowadays, like they just click on YouTube and everything's free content where we had a, we had to look at magazines, make those those workouts come alive and put those into our training regimens. And, dude, I'd, I'd follow even amateur. Like if an amateur had great arms, I would try those workouts, honestly. It didn't matter if I was a, lo a level above. I always looked at everyone's, like, great body parts and said, hmm, I'll try that and put that into my training regimen. Mm. If you Did you try my biceps workout? I did it all. I mean, <laughs> if you, if, 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 if we, hold on, let's break this down. Let's break this down because it's, it's funny. Jay mentioned it. No, yeah. Milos, I only followed your ab routine because that guy said you were an ironing board with abs. Who said that? <laughs> Mike Quinn. Mike Quinn. Yeah. Who, 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 who did you, because I did that all the time. Before each workout, I focus on a specific person, that body part. That motivated motivated uh, made it, uh, motivated me to go to the gym. So who did who did you look at in certain body parts? Jay, do you still remember who you were looking for? I mean, I looked at uh, Dorian Yates, of course, for back training. Who mm. didn't, right? Even though that that heavy duty Mike Menser thing never really. I was always a volume trainer just because Chris Aceto kind of gave me some training knowledge early on. Um, I mean, Matarazzo's calves. I mean, who didn't? look at those and mm. say, oh, you know, even though we know now it's genetic, but as an amateur, I believe that, oh, he had to work for those, right? Um, man, there was a lot. I mean, shoulder routines. I mean, I looked at a lot of guys that, like, look at Dillette, right? I mean, his workouts with, you know, Flex Wheeler or whoever else, like the Flex magazines were the best when it was at metrics. I felt those workouts, I oh, followed yeah. the closest. 
Hey, what? Jay, I have a, a bunch that's of those. That's in my gym. What are you talking about? I was, no, I was no, like, no. He's talking about Met Costa Mesa before you, know, before you I went to Costa Mesa in 96, and I won the Nationals. I remember Chris Lund said to me, Cormier was in here benching the 200s. <laughs> <laughs> I said, how? How? Because I didn't think Chris was one of the monsters, and I'm like, man, he's that strong. So I had to do the 200s that time. <laughs> hey, Jay. But I, I videotaped a lot of those uh, workouts in that gym, and I have them on on DVD. I got I to gotta put those out one of these days, but I got a lot of that. What are you waiting for, man? What are you waiting for? Yeah. I don't have a channel right now. I got to get a channel going. What do you need? But you put, uh, put them on your Instagram. You put everything else on there. Yeah. <laughs> you can buy a this machine, you know that. Dude, I got a, I have a bag of stuff like that. Look, at, look at, look yeah, at me, has... look at Milos. He started something yesterday with Alex Ardenti because he posted a picture saying he's yeah. waiting, he's waiting for some slides or whatever it was. And then, hey, come on, funny I mean, thing. But the funny thing is, I get a text from Alex last night. He said, "Hey, listen, I got a whole bunch of pictures from you from your first photo shoot with me." And, you know, from Alex, he texted me out of the well, blue. Out of, out of, he, he's searching for it. I, no, I was just reading your post. Yeah, and then he, yeah. and then I get a message from Alex that I have your first photo shoot still here. If you want it, send me your address. He sent me the pictures. Yeah, yeah. Hey, let me let me tell uh, uh, Jay to say publicly to Per Bernal to go to Sweden and get us all these fucking pictures that we, we took on the beach. You had some crazy shots by, with the uh, Per Bernal. Right, mm-hmm. I had a, I had like so many good ones, and and uh, he promised me like twenty years ago and fifteen years and five and still he's still not going to Sweden. Who you guys? So, who is the best photographer of all time? Shots, I think I got I got Chris for the for the gym stuff, and I have her for the artistically the black and whites, the black and whites, and then for the backstage, I got the I still got the gardeners. And Brian Moss, Brian Moss for being a Brian, oh yeah for the extra putting it together. Brian Moss, you're right. Yeah, see, see, there's, 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 a, a, there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of good ones. Together. If we, there's a lot of good ones. If we have to choose one, who will we go for though? Oh my god, you know. Uh, well, I mean, we, uh, Chris Lund has to be Chris Lund. That, that's yeah. magic. That I, think I mean, so he, too. he gets into every fucking rap. You know that that's why he told the. Uh, Jay, hey, Chris just did 200, so he can do 200. Uh, but you know how that all went? <laughs> he did all this he, with a heavy weight. He it's a no <laughs> fake green mask. Yeah. Back in the day when we went to Mike Nevue's, uh, uh you know, studio, and he those fake. Oh, shit, Mike Nevue. And you have to make the stupid face, right? And I didn't want to make it a stupid face. He said, no, no, no. You know, you got to you gotta make it. Ah, ah, look good. I hated it. But Chris learned. Didn't want to make you, uh, you know, do the face. He wants you to do the lift and then make your face all you want. Well, he wants you to grit your teeth. <laughs> you, yeah. Chris, Chris still does it today when he trains somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I always, fucking, I always fucking die when I see Chris working. <laughs> when I see Chris training at somebody, the weight's not even lifted yet. Chris yeah, is already. I'm in it. I'm uh, already with him. Yeah, yeah you hundred percent in. Can you guys remember your very, very first photo shoot? Who was the photographer? The very first one. Okay. I remember mine. Oh. Jerry, oh, yeah. Jerry Fredericks. No. And I, yeah. Jerry Fredericks are good. Yeah, Jerry yeah, Fredericks. It was, I know you're talking about. It was the, yeah, the good stage dark shots. Hair. Dark hair, but it wasn't Jerry. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about the dark hair guy. Jerry Fredericks, he was bald headed. I think. Yeah, oh, I, I did the, Rav Dehan. Rav Dehan in San Diego. Rav Dehan was my first. Yeah. And then there was another one. He was always looking around at goals, and he he, he always writer. he always Urban Gelb Urban exactly. First writer. And uh, John. What about the John, first writer? John Amentler, right? John Amentler. He was doing a lot of swag. I, I remember. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah! Oh yeah! Oh yeah! Guys, yeah. guys, who was the guy that did the Muscle Mag column? Was his name Steve Neese or? Steve Neese, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he took the first picture of me posted it. Niece, man. Yeah. Damn. He was something special, that guy, because he would be like in the gym. Like he spent like eight hours in the gym watching who would come through there. He would count how many reps you did with how much weight you would use. And he would post that. That shit was fucking. Yeah, so the, fir- the first oh, the first picture that, that he took of me, I had crazy legs, right? I was 20. And he's like, this guy looked like Craig Titus, but 
way bigger. I'm sure that bothered Craig Titus. <laughs> <laughs> you almost got on the list, buddy. I, I, <laughs> see, thank God I wasn't so late. I still remember when I first went to Goldstein back in 1997. There was still Art Seller walking around with a camera on his neck. Oh, yeah, for sure. For and sure. just taking random shots. Dude, Art took yeah. some of me that was on the stage at the Iron Man that I, I always wanted. I had one of them, but I, I lost... I lost that one, and his wife wasn't, I don't know, she was in the gym with him sometime, too. His wife would be with him, but he took some amazing. And then by shooting Arnold so many times, I was really like, oh, man, that's Art Zeller, dude. Art Zeller took a photo of me. No. All right. How many times did you guys have a Joe Weider attend your photo shoot? Jay? I, my first, uh, my second Muscle and Fitness cover, actually, with Monica Brandt, he came to Robert Reese Studio, which, by the way, is like a 12-hour session, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I've been there. I'm the same session. Um, but what what I want to say about the the um, Chris Lund, and I, I'm sure you guys can relate to this, that was like the prime up for Olympia or like early the shows I would do, like Arnold Classic. Like that was like a sneak peek of like, and you'd get the kind of the gossip of how everyone was looking and, and you wanted his reaction on, okay, this is going to tell how I'm looking, you know, and he kind of gave me a report of, you know, how Ronnie was looking or whatever else. I mean, it's obviously Milos that switched to your gym later, but that was kind of how I, I was motivated to train and be looking better two or three weeks out when I would attend that shoot because I knew I'd be under the scrutiny and, and those pictures would be timeless, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. So... 2006 yeah. pictures of Jade before the Olympia that they took. That was a fucking mind boggling. You know, I could see all, all the guys. And of course, I always had a camera with me. Even when Chris Land was so pissed off because <laughs> I would go behind him <laughs> and take a picture with his lights, right? So I looked like a good photographer because he set up the lights and I'm behind him. <laughs> I, I've been trying to get in touch with Chris London. I can't I can't get I can't get it's to him. It's the same same uh, uh email. Chris London the uh, AOL. I sent an email and he did I didn't hear nothing back. Really? Yeah, maybe Jake can uh he'd be good to get on uh one of these conversation pieces. For I sure. know. I wanted to have him on this round table because I feel, he, like, I feel like when he, he left, he was like, I'm out. I'm done. Yeah. He has some, because he would have some stories. I mean, some real stories too. Yeah. And, might, and maybe, maybe I contributed to that, you know? So I tell you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> last time, uh, and I talked to him about a couple of years ago because you were talking about Peter McGough. You know, God uh, bless his soul. What a great guy. But uh, that was the thing. Everybody was asking me to apologize to this, uh, uh, you know, Paul Truer guy, you know, to to be able to uh, not be suspended. And I didn't want to apologize. And then Chris Lund, he calls me and said, you know, you, you got to do it, you know, apologize, uh, you know, otherwise they're going to kick me out uh, and uh, I'm leaving your gym. If I leave your gym, I'm not going to shoot ever again. And I said, don't you fucking tell me, you know, to apologize. I'm not going to apologize, right? So I guess I yelled at him. And uh, that's what he took uh, against me. Like, he reminded me, you don't remember your screaming session with me? Like, oh, did I? I said, Chris, I just, I don't Milos, let Milos, you lost what to do. Wrong did test you, that day. Milos, did you lose it? Trent. I said, you know. <laughs> Hey, come on, yeah, man. That was a yeah. parabolic day. So, so, you know, you so know. if I do get in touch with him, I, I shouldn't tell him that you're on the, on the round table? No, I, I, I told him, <laughs> I apologized to him. I explained everything, and he understood. Uh, I mean, that's, I was, this is exactly what happened. And uh, Jay, you know the story, right? When they were asking me to apologize, and I didn't want to. And I went to the Weider office, and Paul Chang comes with a piece of paper at the uh, Peter McGough office and put it there just for me to sign. You know, that I apologize. I, I didn't want to, I just uh, to sign. I told him to wipe his ass with that. And that was it. He stormed out of the office. Peter McGough hugged me and he says, look, I respect you, but I can't save you. You know, this is it. <laughs> I respect That's you, what he said. But, but you're going to die. <laughs> but, you know, and, and, uh, and Robin Cheng, I apologize to him. I said, listen, but you guys. Oh, Robin gave you that paper to sign. Just to make me, what? Robin gave you that paper. Robin, yeah, Robin came uh, oh. because I just needed to sign that I apologize. I said, I'm not going to apologize. You know, I didn't do nothing wrong. And uh, that was it. But then I lost, as you know, all the contracts. But the worst of all was Jim contract and Chris Lund stopped shooting because 
Imagine Olympia, medal champions, uh, Adam Classic, any goddamn show, everybody. I mean, how many times uh, Jay Cutler was there? Ronnie, you guys, you know, shit. Seeing, and this is not seeing you in off season. That's seeing you like week out, two to two the days no. after, did, stuff like that. Do Do you remember seeing Chris falling asleep during the photo shoot? No. Ah, uh, Chris. Uh, Chris. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> He was in uh, Brian Moss uh, uh, photo shoot in the Coney Island. Island. <laughs> hey, I he was up all night though. That wasn't fair. No. <laughs> what do you mean that wasn't fair? You know that photo shoot was happening. You still up all night. <laughs> hey, I never well, seen I anybody. Just... He was standing in the bus and snoring. <laughs> he was standing, holding the the pole and snoring. Yeah. yeah. Only Chris could do that. I remember that was that that was a that was an advice I got from Sean Ray in the very beginning when I came to the U.S. and I turned pro. And I always took that I took his advice and I, and I, and I have to thank him for that. He always told me, "Do as many photo shoots as you possibly can." So I was training I was training at Coliseum, and I told Chris when somebody didn't show up or was late, I said, "I'm here." And I sometimes did photo shoots that weren't even my photo shoots, just just so he, you know, didn't put all his stuff up for nothing. Dude, you a know? lot of times with Chris, it wasn't my photo shoot, and I would just go there with Paul Gillette. Uh, sometimes I would, you know, we hung together a lot. Sometimes he would just throw me in. That wasn't my even the one that got me my my contract with Joe. That wasn't my that that wasn't really my photo shoot. I just brought some army stuff with me and stuff, and I'm like just seeing if I can get some shots in, and right, you got it. Right. Joe liked it. But I, I want to ask you something, Jay. Uh, you were with, uh, who was your first contract company? And I was wondering, when did you get with Joe Weeder, and what was that experience like getting into that company? And then how did you wind up in muscle tech, like all of that? Yeah, so... You know, I I won the you know the tournament of champions, and I think think Dennis, you won a similar show, right? The California. What'd you win? The, the um, Border States Classic. Yeah. So <laughs> so that was around like the same. Level. Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah. That was like the same level. So I got noticed. Irv Gelb came and shot me. You had talked about photographers that shot you early. So he came out to my house like three weeks out from that contest, and actually shot me because he wanted to get first dibs on the sales of the pictures, right? So. He came out and shot me. And then, of course, uh, you know, I went out and uh, competed at that show. And I remember Joe Weeder at the time, you know, through Ed Connors and Chris Aceto and whatever we're talking about. If he wins the show, I'll give him a I'll shoot him for the cover. And I got the opportunity to meet Joe Weeder right after that, just before I did my first muscle and fitness cover. I shot probably a week after I won that show. It was like a Friday. I won the show the prior Saturday. And, you know, first thing I did when I walked in his office, of course, walking in that crazy office, right, the Weeder headquarters, it was just, yeah. it was like, wow, I'm here at Joe Weeder's <laughs> office. And I got to meet Joe. I was nervous. I was 22 years old. And uh, he first thing he said to me, he looked at me, I was in a white T-shirt, and he's like, who'd you shoot with? And I'm like, oh, Irv Gelb and whatever. And he's like, oh, because I want to put you on the cover. And he did put me on the cover later, but I had to win that show in order to do that. And at the time, he offered me kind of like a, a subpar offer to a contract. And I said, you know, I'm not going to do the nationals coming up this fall. I'm going to wait until 96 to do it. Uh, this was 95. And then, you know, I won the next year nationals and I signed a bigger contract with him. It was right after the show. I signed the deal back then, as you guys know, you won a national show, you pretty much were almost guaranteed a contract, right? Or uh, it, for Weeder. So, and you know, the contract consisted of, you had to compete in X shows or qualify for the Olympia. That was kind of like the guideline, which I feel today, you know, we, we talk about guys skipping out. Mm -hmm. Back then, it was necessary to hold your contract. You had to compete and try to qualify. So, you know, that's where we lose that incent incentive to compete. Like, you, you know, you can't kind of blame these guys if they don't have the finances to do it, where we were guaranteed. And that contract was a year, right? So, he only did year to year contracts, at least with me. I know. <laughs> and and that was like, so you always had to be on your A game. So I, I signed with him. And then, of course, I went to ISS, um, which was like, oh, yeah, company in 2000. I left uh, that deal. And then I signed a three year deal with them. And at the time, Muscle Tech started chasing me down like into 2003. And that's how I ended up there. 
which, you know, I'm very blessed to work with great companies. I mean, remember Lynn Concrete was our liaison for right, right. Peter, which she was very harsh on a lot of us. I mean, honestly, like she would kind of, okay, what shows you competing in? And, you know, we'd have to do our appearances or whatever else alongside with the photo shoots. But, you know, with ISS, I had a pretty leisure type contract. They didn't actually require me to compete. It was more traveling to events. Right. And then, of course, Muscle Tech was the monster at the time. And the funny thing is, is Paul Gardner, who owned that company, reached out to me prior to me signing with We. This is probably 95. And he said, I'm starting this company called Muscle Tech. He offered me $2,000 for the year at the time. I was a nobody. I hadn't even really been anything yet. And he had he had seen me because Bob Kennedy had you know heard about me through Irv Gelb. And mm -hmm. he's like, I want to sign you to a deal. And then, of course, he became the ad guy. If you remember, Chris, Paul was yeah. actually the ads. And then yeah. Greg Kovacs became and Greg. Yeah. And then eventually yeah. you guys started signing on and we had the biggest roster ever. Right. I mean, I don't yeah. think there ever will be a roster like that. And how did they court you that? They, they courted you first, right? Um, well, I threw out a number that I think was, uh, it was unattainable. Bigger than what they wanted. Big, no, bigger than what I ever expected to get paid. And they call, kept calling me, calling me, calling me. And finally, uh, they said, okay, we'll pay. And <laughs> she said, well, well, fuck it. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah. I, tried, I, tried, I tried to get this from Jay. Like, uh, what was the contract? He says he didn't want to say it. That's, that's what they did with me. But they used to come out and take me to lunch. They just fly out from Canada, take me to lunch after watch me work out, take me to lunch, invite me to dinners and all this stuff when I was not not even able to sign with them. And then I was talking to Biochem. Hopefully, I was, you know, just trying to see. Which which route I was gonna be able to take, but uh, yeah, the same with me. Like I, I I did the same thing, but I had put in the whole I want first class seats. I want I want because uh, they didn't want to do the whole contract like they did with a lot of people with the half or match my winnings or some shit like that. So I was just like, okay, well, give me some first class seats when I fly then. Yeah. And, yeah. And then, and then they didn't want to do the whole, I wanted more more years, you know, because you said that Joe would give one year to year. And I was like, man, I want one, I want more years. I want like four, I want like four years. <laughs> and then like, this is like, I'm like, well, let me know when you guys are able to do it. And then we hung up, but they did that, that same thing. Like we kept calling back and forth and I was like, well, we don't pay that much. I said, well, let me know when you do, because maybe... <laughs> Let me hey, let let me know when Jake leaves and when Jay leaves. So you got you got some no, money I was left there over. Before Jay. Yeah, he was there. Before, oh, he was right. there before. before Jay. And uh, you know, the funny thing is, is I like the multi-year things too. Like ISS, I signed a three-year for comfort. You know, you weren't really sure. Honestly, I didn't know how my career was going to go. I mean, two thousand one was like a, a crazy fluke. I signed the deal in two thousand. Then I next Olympia, I broke through and almost won. So for me, I was in a very comfortable position. As you guys know, I sat out 2002 because I wasn't forced to compete, which probably as I get a little older, I'm like, damn, did I miss an opportunity? Right. Because that was the year. I mean, Ronnie did come in smaller and then this one, this one, Gunther almost beat him. Yeah. At, yeah, at the, like, in, yeah. No, I was I was third. I think Gunther was behind me. Two thousand. I I know no no. He, yeah, he beat him after the <laughs> Olympia at the at the GNC or whatever that was. I remember I was but, uh, I was there. But you I know what? We have to say thank you to Jay because Jay is the one who made it possible for all of us athletes that were signed with Weeder to now have a publication deal and an extra uh, supplement deal. Because remember, before we signed with Weeder, you were signed to a deal where you can't sign with anybody else because you get the, those ABB products. You remember American bodybuilding products and all that stuff. And I think Jay was the one that made that happen. I'll, t I'll tell you the story. So I went to dinner with Blackman and John Romano after 01. Um, I was at the Nationals like a month later. And we sat down. They said, how can we do something together 
where I said, well, why don't I create a column in the book and you can pay me a monthly fee on it? And he goes, yeah, that's a great idea. So honestly, I, I think I signed for like five grand, like a monthly column at the time. It was the first time ever. And it was like, I could still kind of do things with the other magazines. And then Peter McGuff came to me and said, hey, can you do the same thing with MD? You know, we do with MD. And I said, absolutely. And they paid me like 7,500. So I was making, you know, 12 grand a month, over 12,000 between the two books. But then when I lost in 09, 08, I remember I was had a vendetta against Flex a little bit because they really counted me out. And I said, you know, when I finish this contract, it was a three-year deal. I'm going to only be exclusive to MD and MD bumped me to a crazy contract to be exclusive to that book. And I have to, like Blackman, I know a lot of people discredit him, but he signed me to a five-year contract and he stayed true to that five years, even post retirement for me, which I have to give him a lot of credit for, uh, which a lot of people, I know that he he's not done some right things with certain people from their their accounts but uh he he did follow through with everything that they ever pushed me to do but that was the first magazine contracts that's how they were created honestly right right but then it's when we had a publication contract right there was no way you can do anything with the other but the only jay only jay had both and then you know the diuretic testing you know uh, as soon as Jay shows his teeth, everybody backs up. Like, God damn, right. Jay. Question, question for you, Milos, and for you, Chris. Yeah. Who was Joe Weider's favorite? Was it Gunter or Jay? Gunter. <laughs> <laughs> I think, honestly, it might have been uh, Lou. Uh, I, think, I think Lou was the highest paid guy. Oh, was he? Gunter was probably paid pretty well, though. I never Gunter knew what got a Millie. Because I was supposed to get that contract. I, I yeah. heard, I heard that the Gunter got the uh, million dollars for three years. Yeah, yeah, it's three hundred thousand a year. Yeah, yeah, he yeah it, it wasn't a million a year. I, I heard three hundred a year for uh, three years. It wasn't a million years. a year, but it was a, a million. million for three years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 that's possible. Yeah, yeah that, that it was, was a good. million to me. Shit. Well, the good, I guarantee you, it is, and the contract didn't say you have to qualify for the Olympia. No. Because you're going to get an invite regardless. <laughs> well, how many times he got the invite? Twice? Three times, I think. Three times? Yeah. More, I think. No, no, he qual he qualified a few times. I, was, <laughs> shit. I don't yeah. know, man. And, and uh, if you think about it, you know, back then it was, uh, I don't know, I don't even know. Top three that qualified. Uh, top three. Or top five in the at the bigger shows. No, uh, the, Olymp the, the Olympia top ten back then. Hey, but how many times did that happen, though? Not many. Yeah, top 10 Olympia, top five Arnold, yeah, top five other champions. And, top three. And, and I think I, I think great. I think it was also top five at the United Champions. Yeah, guarantee. Because that's how I squeaked in a few times. So now, guys, what do you guys think? Is it Was it easier back then to qualify, or is it easier today? <laughs> is, is grass green? Today, is right right red? No. no. I mean... I'm, well, you could qualify. I'm looking at it from both sides. Back then, it was easier because you could place top three, but it was harder because you had top ten guys in shows. And you had less shows. Less yes, shows. exactly. Really? Well, dude, there was only how many qualification shows, honestly. I mean, yeah. if you did, we had four, we did have the tour back then, but when you have Chris and Kevin and Sean and Nasser and all these guys, how are you going to – how do you hey, qualify? Right. You, know? you, did, you didn't have that problem I had. Yeah. I go to those, those tours and everybody's showing up. <laughs> and I, you know. But yeah, listen, when I when I did the NOC, Ronnie was first, Kevin was second. I mean uh, you mean when I beat you eight at ninety eight? Uh, no, that was the other years. <laughs> <laughs> hey. you know, he claims we had a tiebreaker and he had highs and lows. Yeah, and, I don't, I don't oh, he, oh, he's, oh, he broke down the scorecards for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You had the same amount of points. But they awarded me whatever highs and lows. I'll take it. They probably get, they probably went to, they probably went hey, by age. I have a hashtag. I beat Jay Cutler. That's hey, it. that tiebreaker probably you? Milos. That tiebreaker probably went by age because they said he's older. Let's give it to him. <laughs> hey Jay, uh, did you? Yeah, ever, but listen, uh, I mean, uh, just think about it. <laughs> Sunday, this last Sunday, we had uh, two shows: one in Europe, one here. Yep. Yeah. Like, what the hell? I mean, what opportunity? All the European guys could go there, you know, and uh, be safe. So, yeah. Hey, Jay, you were young. 
back in the day when all this happened, but you must have been right, maybe 22 ish in that area. But there was a, do you remember the East Coast, West Coast wars we had? Like, yeah. like we had like a, like a beef between the East Coast guys and the West Coast guys. Well, so who was Jake represent? Jay represent? Uh, because Jay was, the, Jay was East Coast for sure. Yeah, well, wait, but, we had the Mario he, Mayo situation, no? Yeah, they were, they were East Coast guys. And that we had a. But if you move to the West Coast and you represent, then you represent the West Coast. So how how could Jay represent East Coast when he's living on the West Coast? Well, no, I was I was just asking him was he aware of it and was he was he uh, was that on his mind at ever like about what's the best coast or what guys did or you did, you were you were the gold gym bully, Chris. <laughs> no, we had a crew. I was involved in the. I it was this thing of ours. <laughs> I know, but just admit it. You, Rico, Flex, you yeah, guys. I mean, that was our. That was where we came from. That's the type of mentality we had. Came from where? Even when you guys are gym bullies. Even when you came into the gym looking for a handout or accolades, <laughs> you didn't get. It. <laughs> We was like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> Those guys were chasing Mike Tyson. You know the story. I mean. <laughs> No, but yeah. the, the thing I know is, I know exactly what Jay is saying because I remember I remember when nobody would talk to me either. I would walk, <laughs> I, I would say hi to Flex, you know, and I, you know it was kind of like a, it was almost like a shy hi because I knew Flex from the magazine. Now I'm in Gold's Gym, he's sitting down and he was he's doing, and I said, "Hey, how you doing, yeah, Flex? We didn't, we how you doing, Flex? And he, this is what he did. He like didn't that. even look at me. He's like, that's <laughs> <laughs> like." What the fuck is wrong with him? Oh, I, I told him that. In the meantime, I told him that at least a hundred times. I said, "You motherfucker, you just ignored the shit out of me." And then at the USA's, then literally a couple of weeks later at the USA's, I'm on stage. It's my first USA's, and he flexes there. My brother's sitting there. Flex is sitting in front of I don't know with who, in front in front of my brother. And Flex knew that I was from Germany, right? So my brother's telling him. He said he he wanted to get up and just punch him from the from behind. He was screaming all kind of shit and shit in German. You know what I'm saying? I was like, I'll be damn. I said, okay, until 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 Hungary one year, and then we got to talk in the in the in the bus after the show. And that's when I realized how he really is. Because if you don't know, I mean, you you, you think that those, those they're bullies. You know, they, they didn't talk they, to anybody, right? No, no we didn't. Probably we didn't not. talk to Sean. Sean came through, even though I knew Sean well. But it was when it was contest time, and he was coming through there. I didn't have much to say to Sean either, or uh, even Paul Delat. Paul had to, you know. I guess I don't know. We felt like you guys got to prove yourself or something in some kind of way before y'all before we let y'all into that little <laughs> what's up and all that stuff. <laughs> Right. You know, it's like gunslingers come through the door, you know. <laughs> Jay, Jay, where's bodybuilding heading now? Our open bodybuilding category, where are we heading? Um, I mean, this I, I think this year is going to be super competitive. I mean, I, I know people try to downplay this isn't, you know, the golden years are done and, and whatever else. And, you know, we have a lot of. I think, you know, this year it, it's it's a question mark on who we think is going to win it. But, you know, with the other divisions, I, I know, you know, listen, I know Chris is like super popular and classic and, you know, men's physique is a category where I feel, you know, guys have improved a lot. But I think, you know, there's an opportunity now where people have a choice, you know, when you start off as a teenager, I just think we have less of the younger youth chasing bodybuilding, which is unfortunate because people talk about the youth being the future of of what something can become and i feel like we just don't have as much um admiration for the bodybuilding side you know of course people are going to transition because they they're going to grow and they're going to outgrow divisions but I feel like the start of these new divisions really hurt the opportunity for open bodybuilding in mm. my in yeah, got, even a choice. We didn't have a choice. Shorter, I, I could do this uh, now, as opposed to the wait time it takes to to build. I mean, we started off this conversation uh, with training, and all of us went through all these 
I, I think all of us train twice a day, right? I mean, I, I've seen everyone's articles. I, mean, I know you guys on a personal level, but you know, I was contracted. I was, I followed a bodybuilding lifestyle like you wouldn't believe. I feel like the internet, ever, all the bro science out there, the new types of training uh, strategies and whatever else, it's th it confuses a lot of people. And we getting away from the nitty gritty of like, just going in the gym and eating food and training, it's just too complicated in my opinion. And, you know, now, you know, with weight caps and everything else, I mean, I think it's, it's just really hindering people. I mean, look at, they're changing up the divisions because of that, because they're still trying to level off. It's like starting over again, where the open category, I mean, it's just, you just go and you build the physique that you want to build and, you know, you put it up against the best in the world and whoever wins, wins. And, you know, it's harder for the promoters to make money. I mean, people now with with live with live streams and everything else, like people aren't attending the shows as much when you it's kind of like the UFC effect. Like I'll talk about this because Milos, you're a huge fan. I know, Dennis, you follow it really close. Like I used to anticipate seeing like fights because it was few and far. Now it's like every week. I can't even keep up with the superstars. I knew who the superstars were before, where it was like Randy Couture and, you know, Chuck yeah. Liddell and all these guys. Mm -hmm. Now there's like a new superstar every week. And I feel like bodybuilding, you know, in a whole has just, there's a lot of names. I don't even know some of the, the guys, you know, that's, and I follow it. I feel rather close. Mm -hmm. There's just a lot of participation, but it's not, it's outside of the open category too. And you're seeing a lot of the Europeans now break through because I think bodybuilding is still kind of the, the core there maybe. And maybe I'm, maybe I'm wrong. Dennis, you promote shows in yeah. Germany. You it's, tell me. A classic, classic. You think classic, you think classic is the most like the enthusiasm to <clears> show up <throat> and, and to participate in like the, the, the huge audiences and stuff or. Well, it, it, I just, Go ahead, Sorry. Jay. Go ahead, Jay. I just think um, it's just a little confusing on which, you know, how many times have someone come to you and say, what should I compete in? Mm -hmm. Like, they're not sure if it's men's physique, classic physique, bodybuilding, right? People are confused on what division they really belong in, even on the women's side, right? We have wellness now. Uh, there's just a lot of scattered character categories, which I feel opens up opportunity for people. But as a youngster coming in, I had one choice and that was bodybuilding. And that was the love that I had. Like we said, it was very limited opportunity to get a pro card. It was very limited opportunity to compete in pro shows to qualify for the biggest show. There were only, you know, there were only 15 guys qualified usually because, you know, the limitations of the shows and, you know, you had the best in the world. Now, of course, you see a lot more people, you know, I think the lineup this year will be shortened up. We see guys dropping out every week, it seems like, but mm -hmm. You know that that top ten is going to be one hell of a top ten, in my opinion. Yeah. No, no doubt, no doubt. I mean, how do you how do you guys feel about it? I mean, would you agree or disagree? I I agree. I agree 100%. with everything you said. I I and and to, to your question regarding the popularity of open bodybuilding in Europe, it's less bodybuilders now. It's more when you look at shows here in the U.S you could see the numbers of bodybuilding that dropped. You see numbers yeah. increase in physique and in classic physique, especially classic physique in the last two years. And in Europe, it's still, I would say, 50 to 60% more bodybuilders than here. In yeah. local shows, I'm talking regional shows, not even pro qualifiers, just regional shows. So, but you could see the numbers are not where they are because right now, a lot of guys that used to compete in bodybuilding this is competing classic. For them, it doesn't really matter if they're a classic shape. They just think, oh, I can make weight, so I compete in classic. So that tells me that classic is gaining in popularity. So I think that there's a lot of guys right now that just want to look like these classic guys, which is, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, we got some great athletes in classic, but in bodybuilding, I don't think it is the same if you compare it what it used to be the top 10 was top 10 great fucking awesome guys and they could all potentially win the Olympia. Every single uh, one of them. Right now, you can say that who plays as 8th or ninth or 10th, 
they might not ever win the Olympia or they don't even have a shot. You can literally look at somebody and say, ah, I don't think that's Olympia potential. But he could place in the top 10. So maybe I'm wrong when I'm, I'm wrong for saying that, but that's just how I feel. Okay. Speaking of that. Go okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go, go, Chris. Okay. I was going to say, I think there are the categories, you know, men's physique. Some of those guys probably never, was gonna, never would have the legs that it would need that you would need to compete in bodybuilding. A lot of some of the classic guys, they may have been good bodybuilders if it was if, if classic wasn't there. And I but I think that takes away from those guys that's coming in first time in Olympia, making a top six, uh, something like that. Like it t- just t- cuts away at those type of people. Cause you know, at the Olympia you got, you know, some people, you know, you got the champ, you got Hottie, Lonsford Walker, Curry, uh you know, you got some of these guys. It's the first time in, like the Burtons, the Burtons, and the, the Ross Flanagan's, and the people like that. <clears throat> Those people are going to be hard pressed to make the top six. Like that's that's not going to be something that's going to be doable because you have those. It's so heavy, top heavy, with quality, and then um, it just fades down hard after the top ten. So. Yeah. Well, uh, I want to ask you uh, both, uh, um, Chris and Dennis. You, you said about the Olympia potential, and I, I wanted to. I know that you went with uh, J two thousand to British Grand Prix and uh, you know post Olympia Euro Tour, and, and and I guess you saw him there. I I haven't seen those shows. I know that as, when I seen uh, J ninety six first time in uh, uh, Gold Gym. Uh, I, I really didn't think that uh, uh, Jay, you had a potential to win Miss Olympia. I mean, it just that's '90s era. All the Chris's and Flex Wheelers and Sean Ray's and Kevin Lebronis and all that stuff, right? So you put this, this things in perspective. So I didn't see it coming. '98 uh, when I beat him out of the champions, this <laughs> 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 That awesome. You know, so '99. When I beat you at Olympia, <laughs> and I uh, just kidding. I, I didn't see. I know what I wanted to say. I didn't see you uh, coming until uh, 2001 when you absolutely shocked me at the Olympia stage. But I, I guess Dennis, you saw him 2000, and uh, as Jay was kind of talking uh, uh, that Chris Acido told him after 2000 British that the gap is much, you know, closer than people would think. And uh, Jay came back with the vengeance in 2001, almost beat uh, Ronnie. Mm-hmm. But did you look at Jay like... Yeah, but like, I, I, I yeah. see, I, I don't compare this with Jay because that was Jay's second Olympia and you could see already what, what's, what's there. I'm not, com- I'm not looking at these guys when they're amateurs. I'm, looking, I'm talking about guys that are qualifying for the Olympia two, three times already. And you already yeah. know... But, but yeah, the, my question is not about the guys. Oh, about, okay. Hey, right. I yeah. want to know. I want to know when did you see potential in Jay and Chris? You too. Okay. When did you see that? I'll tell you when. I, when he started coming around more, uh, he was with uh, Muscle Tech, and we even before he was with Muscle Tech, I think we had a conversation, Jay, about you know the potential of you being with Muscle Tech and the the perks. And I think I was like, man, you'll like it, man. I said you'll like it. So Jay was like, you know, I, I we we'd speak, you know, numerous occasions about. You know all kinds of different stuff. You know, I've been, I even like, I was telling Jay, man, I got you got to eat a bunch of fucking sushi, man. I fucking pound this shit right here, like since for the last ten years or so. And I was like, looking at Jay, like I didn't, I didn't look at Jay like, oh, he could never make the Olympia. I was looking at Jay like, man, he's got potential. I just don't think he's doing all the right things that's gonna help him. I, I admit, Jay, I, I can, you, what? I can see Chris. We back up to whatever year you're just talking about. I can tell you exactly what Chris was thinking. There's no way. Oh, me, there's, no, gonna, there's no way he. No, don't there's say nothing, there's uh, Jay. no way Jay will blow him out the water. Go ahead. Go he ahead. probably thought that there's no way that Jay will ever beat him. <laughs> <laughs> if you're honest, that's probably what you thought. No, but listen. Okay. <laughs> to, <laughs> Tell the truth. To my defense. No, no. To my defense. All right. Blow me out the water. I'm gonna blow out your water. Out the water. <laughs> it was two guys that I was. I kind of like had under my wing a little bit. And I gave different information too that I thought had great potential. One name was Jay Cutler. One name was uh, Dexter Jackson. Mm-hmm. And you ask those two if I told them pivotal things that 
will catapult them to a different level of everything. It wasn't, I didn't care about the competition. I was, I thought I could be one of the best one day, no matter what, no matter who was there. But I did see enough to where it's like, I'm going to spend that time to be like, hey, if you're doing these different things, that's going to make you better. You're going on tour, this is what you need to do, and that's going to make you better. You can ask them both. Man, I be, I, no, I believe you. I believe you. But I, so, so, you know, hey, what is the answer? When, when did you see it? When? I saw it in 99. Yeah, Chris, Chris was a mentor to me in a way, which probably is surprising to a lot of you guys. But, um, you know, him and I, he was very inviting conversation to me. And he did, you know, he hooked, looked, he hooked me up with Steve Murphy, which I credit Steve Murphy a lot, you know, that neuromuscular therapy. I know I, I harp on this all the time, but it did make a huge difference in my body. And I still attribute why I'm in the health I'm in today. Was Steve the guy in Costa Mesa? Yes. Yeah. He, was un oh, he was yeah. unbelievable. And, and honestly, I saw him every week. I'd fly, even when I moved to Vegas, I'd fly back and forth. But, you know, Chris took the time to sit with me and, you know, he like today, like he's, he's kind of a teacher to a lot of the new generation. And, you know, we don't have that with all the pros, right? I mean, even myself, I mean, I don't really mentor um, people in the gym. Like Chris is still in the gym learning new techniques. And I mean, I, I feel like him being around golds, like I can't say I, I kind of laughed and said he was the bully, but, but in, honestly, he was the nicest one of that <laughs> group. Um, but remember, Rico was a competitive with us, Dennis. Like he was trying to get his card at the time. And then Flex, I think Flex was just so good at the time. Like he just, he was on a certain level and, and he was very intimidating too, but he was nice. The first time I ever met him, he said hello to me and whatever else. I mean, it wasn't really like conversation, but, you know, Chris really did um, push me to to try to be better. And, and I was chasing these guys. I mean, all these guys were my idols. And Dennis, I was, I was nervous of you, you know, because like you came on and in kind of the high point of my career, like Oh three and seeing the pictures of you and, you know, you coming over and training at Golds and getting all, all that hype. I mean, you had the most hype of anyone going into the 2003 Olympia, in my opinion. I mean, I know Gunther and I were hyped as because obviously he had beat Ronnie in 02 and I had, hadn't competed in the Olympia since 01. And like, what a hell of a, a Olympia that was, right, mm, Dennis? Mm, yeah. Like, I mean, that must have been the high point of your career. Absolutely. Absolutely. They really thought you were coming for the title that year. And I know you were devastated probably with a fourth place finish, but. No, I wasn't. I, I, not at all. I was, listen, I, I, and I mentioned that I think a week or two weeks ago that I never really thought that I'm going to beat a guy like Ronnie Colvin at that time, especially not 2003. So. But my goal was to get as you know to, to go in and get as high as I possibly can, and you know I would have been okay with you know I, I, I wish I would have got third you know you know but fourth place for me, there's not a lot of people that can say they placed top four at the Olympia, especially not in the Olympia when you look at the guys that were in that lineup. So no, that's absolutely I was not disappointed. I was happy, and I was it gave me a shitload of motivation for the following year. You know, so no, I wasn't disappointed at all. But you know, you know, you know what kind of hurts about bodybuilding, though, guys. Like we we talked about even starting this with the, the nutrition. Like, oh, it's so hard to eat the six meals, right? But Chris, do you remember the days when you didn't have to stuff yourself with food and you could compete? I don't feel like the early years. Like we we all complain about how much food it took to make us the size we wanted to be. And honestly, I got way bigger. We talked about the ninety nine curb and out shots on the beach. Like I was 240 in those pictures. Mm. Like I had to reach up and come, I won my first Olympia 273. It's just too damn big. And I understand like when you hear like Ian Valier or, or uh, now Brett Wilkin drop out of the Olympia and they talk about the food consumption that was just too much and whatever else, that's, how is that not going to scare people away from professional bodybuilding, right? Mm. Because I feel you have to be so big and so round, look at Brandon Curry, right? How big and round is Brandon Curry? Like to the point where he has to come in a little more trim to be like defined enough, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I never thought Brandon would be that big. I mean, even Derek, look at the side, look at the roundness of Derek, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Samson, uh, that's just, to me, if you look at the level, there's a lot more closer 
guys. I, I maybe not with with Chris's era and Flex and all those guys. Like that top six was unbelievable, right? But man, like the bodies that we're dealing with now. I mean, if you're not like pushing over two fifty, how are you going to be competitive? Which I think is crazy. Hmm. Yeah. Could yeah, could tough. could these guys? Could these guys? This I know it's it's a question that not everybody wants to answer, but I think it's a good question. Guys like like the top six from last year, let's say the top six from last year, where would they place in the top six, let's say in the 93, 94, 95? Would anybody yeah. would, would every, anybody have anybody Yeah, mind boggling to think. Chris, Flex, Kevin, Sean, four guys that just premier athletes and they never never won Olympia. I mean, yeah. that's that's that puts things in perspective. Those four guys could be Mr. Olympia today at uh, any point, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so what do you think? If you, Let's take the top six from now and put them in the Olympia, let's say, 98. The, okay, but the, one thing, Dennis, oh, I think... Okay, just, guys, just, just, just answer. <laughs> just, just answer. <laughs> just, an, just answer it's first. Hard to, it's hard to say, man. I know it's hard to say, but because... Because when you look at it, when you look at it, who out of the top six from last year would have a legitimate shot making top six? Let's say 98. Just you choose one. Okay, let's, let's throw out Sean Ray. Would Sean Ray be big enough to stand next to Hottie Chupin, Derek Lunsford? Like, it's a, they judge the I, size I, now, I feel like, right? Mm, yeah. I think yeah. Sean Ray. I think yeah, Sean. The, the same Sean plays second to Dorian. Now, are those guys bigger than Dorian? I would, I would, no, I would, I would say Sean. I would, Sean I would say Sean, 94 or 96. Six, yeah. Would still fight for the Olympia title today. What about Kevin Lebron? Same. Uh, yeah. No doubt in my mind that Kevin, Chris 99. Kevin, Kevin, at, Kevin at his best. Yeah. Chris, 99 Olympia. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh, that was, that was tough, man. Yeah, that's 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 what I'm trying to say. I'm not listen. I'm not down talking any of these guys. These guys are great, and this is the best we have right now. You know, this is the top of the top. But when you size is not everything. Size is not everything. I mean, if we compare sizes, then you know, look at NASA, look at Paul Dillette. You know, look at uh, look at some of these monsters from back in the days. I'm just I'm, I I'm just threw this question out because sometimes I'm, I'm just thinking about it. That's it. Because I saw. Um, What's his name? Um, the guy that does the BAT podcast. What's BAT. his name? What is that podcast? Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, he had Dorian on. He had Ronnie on. He had uh, Dexter oh, no, on. Uh, uh, Paul, guy. Paul, Paul. Um, Patrick B. David. Patrick, yeah, uh, uh, Patrick yeah. David. And I remember when he had Dorian. Dorian was the first one on his podcast, and he yeah, and he sure. showed pic, he showed Dorian the picture of Brandon Curry. That was 2019. He just won the Olympia. Dorian said he wouldn't make top six in our time. Yeah. I mean, Ronnie, <laughs> when, <laughs> when, when he had Ronnie on, I think Ronnie was feeling a little good from the painkillers that moment because <laughs> Ronnie was Ronnie had Ronnie had a good time. <laughs> He's right there in Dallas. Yeah. That's the way they do that, right? Yeah. yeah. No, I think this guy's in Florida. I thought, because they were trying to fly me out, but it was during COVID. Yeah. And I was in Australia. I thought it was to Dallas. But so, but man. everybody they asked, and he had Sean on at one point, and they said the same thing. There's no no chance. No thing. Is it really true? That's why I'm asking the question. Uh, listen, I'm, I'm not even in that era, so I think I can speak over all these guys. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, that... Like I said, that top six, seven, ten, like crazy. I mean, you threw in Delette, you threw in Delette there, you know, you throw in lot Nasser. You didn't even talk about him, uh, uh, Milos. You know, he he wasn't maybe one of the guys. He could have won. I mean, he was second one year, right? Right. Uh, uh, man, I I mean, maybe it's just because I witnessed that and I was a fan of it. And today, I'm not that I'm a fan, but I you know I just don't see. Um. I just don't see what I saw then, I guess. Mm. You know, I went to at 95, I sat four rows back, and I didn't think Dorian Yates in a magazine was mind-boggling until yeah. I saw him in person, and he walked out, 
And I said, I understand why now Dorian Yates is Mr. Olympia. Mm. It was not close. Yeah, you had to be there and see that. Yeah, Pixas it- Pic- oh, didn't do many justice. True. It was shocking, dude. It, even even though you could pick his body parts for body parts, you know, not the back, but most of his body parts, you could pick him apart. Like, oh, this is not that great. This is not that great. I, 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 that I know, I know, I know. But every you shot all together, man. You like holy every, shit. Every and every pose he hit, he looked good at. Yeah. He made yeah. every pose he look good. At that pose. Yeah, yeah. People always ask how I got here. Uh, uh. I was willing to work just a little harder than everyone else. Every damn day. If I can have hundreds of hours back, you know I'm gonna grab them. Spending hours prepping chicken, rice, and vegetables, F that. I rely on perfect nutrition. I rely on trifecta. So, you know, it's all, people throw it out, it rock, who would have won in 98, Dorian or Ronnie Coleman? I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, don't. wait. Well, yeah. 97, yeah. Dorian won. Uh, you know, what part had the front Dorian Dorian the last spread? 95, Dorian, ooh, the, the one that you saw live, uh, I, I was probably right next yeah. to you. In 95, I think that this was crazier condition than Andreas Munzer. I, I've seen Munzer compete. I, I competed with Munzer. And he had that freaky, 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 you know, like uh, striations everywhere and dryness. But Dorian 95, it, it, it was, uh, I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. Uh, 98, 98 uh, <laughs> end of the prejudging Ronnie Coleman, not beginning of the prejudging because uh, it was different. Story. Wasn't he, wasn't he as, as good at prejudging or was he just overlooked? Who? Uh, Ronnie? Ronnie. Uh, Ronnie, was, Ronnie was watery, soft. You know, if even uh, I remember being there, he was again like sixth call out, whatever. You what, know? When did it, when did that ever happen that somebody doesn't get the first couple call outs and he ends up winning the show? I've never seen that happen. Uh, not often. Yeah. Wasn't it that one that first one that first breakthrough was in Europe? Um, for who? He started for Ronnie when he. No, I with. think his breakthrough was at the at the Night of Champions the same year, Champions. the same year, the same year. Yeah. The year, I, the year I competed in it. Yeah. He. He beat Kevin, which was a kind of a shock, you know? Mm. This is how it was, exactly. Uh, I was with Ronnie competing from 91. 97 European Grand Prix Tour, the last show was uh, uh, Russia, and he beat him. Uh, uh, Kevin was dominating. He beat Nasser every time. Nasser just played second to Dorian uh, at Olympia, and then it was like six shows in a row. Kevin was just dominating. And then he and gave Ronnie him the vodka. Was, yeah, I, I mean, uh, yeah, Chris, yeah. Was there. Chris was beating uh, Nasser in a few shows. And by the end of the show, the, the tour, uh, Ronnie won. First show, 98, San Francisco, Kevin beat him still. Uh, Canada, uh, 98, uh, and the Night of the Champions, uh, Ronnie beat uh, Kevin. And that was already uh, very convincing. But nobody, come on, nobody counted 98 Olympia that, that uh, he can pull it off. That was Flex Wheeler's show to, 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 Flex is to lose, yeah. yeah. And then, the, the, like I, I said it before, but man, Flex on that Wednesday, dude, it was like, no way, dude, no way, no way, no way. I could not believe he made it to the shape he did, even though he was still a little bit off. I couldn't believe he got to where he got to from what he looked like. He was so far off three days out? So far off, so far off. I was like, it was like almost comical the way he didn't even kept the lights dim when we went in <laughs> to go see what he looked like, to check what he looked like. Me and Flex, me and uh, Rico went to go see him, and he's like, and then Rico tried to turn the light on. He got mad. <laughs> in, in the posing room, Chris, at Gold. Oh, in the fucking his hotel room. <laughs> oh, oh. To go, we we check each other out. You know, he was like, yeah, he had turned the light off. <laughs> yeah, dude. He had the shade off. He had a shirt, had a, lamp, a shirt over the lamp. He didn't yeah. want. It. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Sure. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that was in New York, right? Yeah, New York. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the uh, the Olympia is up on us. We got, what, four weeks? Three and a half? Yeah. Three and a half yeah. weeks. We have two more qualifications. Charles, um, uh, it's a Charles Griffin. Griffin. Charles Griffin. Just yeah. qualified for his third Olympia. And, and Thierry Liguer. Yeah. You know, the- that friend, is that a French guy or where is he from? Yeah, French. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, so, I mean, when you look at these guys qualifying right now, I don't think that they're, they're going to have a super hard time to even break into the top 10, top 15, possibly. You know, it's, 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 uh, uh, it's going to be a hard show for those guys. There may, there may only be 15 guys in the show. You think? A 20 something, 22, 3. Oh, no, but it, they, we had a lot of drop offs. I know. didn't even know that Brett Wilkins dropped out. Yeah. yeah. Why? Yes. Yeah. His body was. He had right. some stomach issues, couldn't hold down his food. Like uh, he was, you know, vomiting and, you know, on a daily basis. Oh, really? And uh, yeah, some kind of maybe some digest, digest, digestive issues I mean, or whatever. Yeah. I guess who, who uh, else is out? Brett is out. Who else is out? Is Nathan in? Is he is he doing it? Nathan's in. Quite questionable if he's going to sh- be able to make it though, right? Yeah. I mean, he's yeah. saying he's saying everything's good, but I, we don't know. So and Kamal's in the open, or is he in the, he's in the two twelve? I don't know yet. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we still out. To we'll play. see. We'll see who's winning that battle. Me or Milos. We got, we got Regan. How do you think Regan's going to No, no, but, no, but who's out? Who else is out? Brett oh, is I'm, out. Who else is out? Okay, the the Big Rami is out. Big uh, Rami's Jan out. Is out. Who? And, uh, yeah, Ian Valier. How do you say? Oh, Jan? Ian, Ian, Ian. <laughs> Ian. <laughs> Retired. Yeah. Oh, shit. Man, how do, you, how do you get ready for a show and you say, I'm going to retire? Well, Damn. you just bat, just. I don't know. I don't know. There's, there's I mean, a, it, it, de- it depends. Could be several reasons. I mean, you know, I, I would like to know. Looking at the lineup, I would, I would like to know what the real reason is because he's how old is Ian? Is he 32, 33, 31. 32? 32 yeah. You know, that's, th- that's an early age. age to retire, especially if you, you know, consistently but qualify you know, for the Olympia. So I hope it's it's not has nothing to do with you know, health issues. I hope he's okay. Damage. Damage to the muscles. Could be. It could be. It could be many things. We don't really know. I mean, at the end of the day, we can always speculate, and uh, I don't want to speculate. So, do you uh, think people do? Well, the dropouts. There's still more than twenty. There's more than twenty. Yeah. More than twenty. Yeah. 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 With the three, four guys not competing, uh, it's still more than twenty. Hey. All right. Uh, Mustafa, he's in there, right? Hassan, yeah, he's in it. All right, so we can't we can't stop this podcast without going through a early prediction. We got a four week out prediction going on. I got Jay, Milos, Chris, and myself. So we all know who's competing. We know who's dropped out. I'm going to start with you, Milos. Give me your why? Why always me first? Because yeah. you are you on top on the left. I have to start okay. with you. All right, all right. Listen, I, I I'm not going to change. Samson winning, Hardy second, Derek third. Uh, fourth is going to be uh, um, who's Derek for a third? Uh, Samson winning, uh, Hardy second, Derek third, Nick Walker fourth, fifth uh, is going to be uh, uh, Andrew Jack, yeah, and sixth, uh, uh, Brendan Curry. Okay, we're going for six today. All right, honorable, uh, okay, uh, top five, yeah, uh, top okay, five. I'll, leave, I'll leave the sixth in there. Chris, you want me to remind you what you had last week? Yeah. Remind him. You had, yeah. <laughs> because it changes every week. He yeah. had, Chris had Hardy, yeah. Derek, Samson, Nick, and Andrew. Um, who first, Chris? He had Derek last. No, he had uh, last yeah. week. Chris had Hardy winning. I go back and forth with Hardy. And, 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 <laughs> I know. You had, you had Derek a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, no, 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 no. Derek had Chris had had, had Hardy winning it. both 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 weeks. I had a No, don't 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 make that up. <laughs> I have a, I, I have it on paper. They go back and forth with me though. You, you yeah, haven't changed him. you haven't changed your winner yet. You had Hardy both weeks. Okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna switch him back. Derek <laughs> for Hardy second. Derek? Okay. Third uh Hardy. Uh, Samson, fourth, Nick, fifth, uh, Andrew. Don't forget about Hunter Labrada, guys. Yeah, Hunter. You know what these guys like? Okay, give me a six, give me a sixth place, sixth place, since we got six for Milos. Okay, I got Hunter six. Okay, yeah, because Hunter was what seventh last year or eighth? Seventh, I think. No. Seventh. I know he was. I know he was fourth the year before. 
Yeah. I think I think it'll be he, he, Hunter was 7th and uh, Andrew Jack was 8th. Okay. Right? Oh shit. Uh, damn. Yeah. Well, but you can only put 6 in the top 6, Chris. We 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 we're done here. Okay. Well, what, I'm well, going Huh? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Go I'm ahead. going with Derek. This hasn't changed in three times now. I'm going with Derek. I'm going with Samson in second. Oh, wow. Going up. I'm going with Hardy. Who's that? With Hardy. Nick. Nick. Um, Brandon. And Andrew. I Jay. like that. I think Dennis, you've got the closest ones. <laughs> Chris, I, let, I mean Jay. Now you can kill mine and come on. Hardy, Hardy, Derek is. I think I'm going to put those as the top one and two. Okay, which one is one? Mm, I think Derek has the best shot right now. Okay, Derek. I don't know because I haven't seen Hardy. You know what I mean? That could change. But okay, Hardy second. Um, Samson, Nick, Hunter. Samson. Brandon. Nick. Hunter and Brandon. I don't know how many that is. That's six. No, Andrew? Yeah, I mean, somebody has to be out, right? Somebody yeah. has to yeah, be out. Yeah, that, that, that's yeah. the thing. That's the yeah. thing. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna sit with that for right now. I think I hate making predictions. I, I was yeah. angry when people made predictions when I was. <laughs> they didn't vote for me, you know. But hard to count Hadi out. I think Hadi's, but I just feel like Derek had first place votes last year, you know. Right. And I think Derek is gonna be so much improved. I mean, mm -hmm. I think, I think the same. I think he's gonna be absolutely like mind boggling. Crazy at this Olympia, mm. and if you already and I think if, as a you know and, and as a Mr. Olympia, if you lose your title, if someone beats you, there's a good chance that someone else can sneak right in front of you too. That's why I put Samson in second this time. I mean, Samson comes down to condition, yep. and I mean that's always been his hindrance, and I mean that's really what 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 it's going to come down to. Nick Walker, we know, is going to be in crazy shape. Obviously, I mean, he thinks he's coming to win. He was third last year, fourth the year before. How do you knock him out of the top five or even potentially moving up? I mean, yeah. I mean, I think if someone comes in off, he definitely slides up. But I feel Hunter has momentum, too. Remember, I mean, he lost to Andrew, but, you know, has he found the formula? You know, as Andrew, Andrew's the one that had to travel over from Dubai and train in the States. And I just think when you have a settled atmosphere and it's not like it's your own, everything's kind of the same. It's just a little easier for me, I think, hmm. you know? So. Can Hunter beat an Andrew if an Andrew is on? I think it was close at that Texas show. Mm -hmm. It was. You, was it close? Or? That, that's what they say, yeah. They, they had, I think they compared him. The final call out, I think they did four rounds. But his look was better the, at, the, at the one in Tampa, I thought. Whose look? Uh, Hunter's. Hunter. He was better than Tampa and still lost. I thought lost. he was better in Tampa then. Yeah. I thought he was better in Tampa. I think it came down I to... I think they have it together, I but think, doing that second show... Uh, I think it was so close that they made him pose until one of them started fading. What do you, uh, Chris, I mean, you're, what do you think? I mean, can, can Hunter, can he win that battle? I think he'll be better. Um, I think the attributes of, of Andrew is, is the more superior, uh, especially at, up in this area. It's like, that that area is pretty much second to none with with Andrew. It's just the other body parts, the you know, the back the back stuff is still not uh, a wow factor. And uh, you know, the the actual lines in the hamstrings are still not not super detailed. But I think uh, you know, he's just gonna have to play to his strengths and and see where he falls, but I mean, does he have the mass to stand with these guys is the question. I know he's big dude, but 
you know, you put Andrew? in me and Derek and all these other Sam. Andrew? And, yeah. Yeah, not, I don't think yet. I don't. I, I think his legs are a little, 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 little in, in need of mass there, and it's hard to feel in that that leg. You know, if you had the Greek freak out there, he would have a hard time too. He just it's just the length of that leg, you know. Yeah, the, the question that you ask: Does uh, Andrew, who is two ninety, has enough mass to stand next to the you know kind of Derek, who is what uh, two thirty five? Yeah, but yeah, but he's a foot shorter. Yeah, I, I understand. But uh, look, Derek impressed, that shocked everybody last year, and and uh, Jay knew Jay. When we were talking about before the Olympia, he he had a prediction that uh, Derek is going to win. So Jay has an inside scoop and probably seeing things that we don't see. <laughs> but I, I, te I tell you this because you just mentioned that Andrew is two ninety and Derek maybe two thirty five. Yeah. When they turn around, I think that that Derek yeah, has the widest, thickest back of all of them. One million percent. One million percent. So that's why. That's why. How much? Yeah. How much he but weighs it is doesn't a, even matter. Shoulders and the arms and the chest and the legs, right? Mm -hmm. That complete the picture. And uh, I don't think that Derek is massive. He creates illusion, and it looks like he improved the legs. He needed to improve the legs because they, they were, you know, downsized last year. And then uh, chest, shoulders, arms. You know, the density was not there. Hardness, which. You want to think, well, that was not there 2021 when he won uh, uh, 212. He was not there to 2020, right? So at which point that maturity comes? Sometimes it comes, sometimes it never comes, right? Yeah. Sometimes, they, you know, you know, they, and then you have a Hadi Chupan that when he squeezes, everything is happening, right? That uh, it's a front relax, front uh, mm -hmm. most muscular, you know, the side chest. So there are many poses you can see that, but I, I agree. Listen, Derek is like the craziest V taper ever. Yesterday in a in a show when I talked to you, uh, Jay, I said extreme V taper, extreme. You you would think that the 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 bigger the V taper, the better. Sometimes it's not right, but in a Derek's case, it is. He's so impressive. You know the V taper when when he opens up those lats and the, and the waist is so. Tiny. If you have the, if you have the flaring quads along with it, yeah. then it's absolutely you know, it's not, yeah. Not, you need the quads. <laughs> it, it's not yeah. like guarantee. For the, the greater the V taper and X frame, mm -hmm. the, the better. Somehow you have to have a shape to it. And Derek has a beautiful cobra lats into the super small uh, waist. I mean, he he he's going to be hard to beat. Uh, yeah, for sure. And I'm 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 in with Jay, and I'll tell you exactly what I think. Just like Jay said that we already know what Hardy can bring. He's going to be super peeled. Absolutely. He's going to be one of the most shredded guys, but we've seen that over and over again. So that's nothing new. Derek's going to bring something new that we haven't seen from him. That's what I believe. Hopefully he's not letting me down because I think he's going to get on that stage and people are going to be like, wow. Yeah. Well, Samson's going to bring something new too. Absolutely. So. That's why I have Samson in second <laughs> today. Yeah, yeah. man. That I'm really who is the, but who is the really... real dark horse though? Do we have a dark horse that we never didn't even mention that can potentially upset the whole card? What about Crizo? No one's talking about Crizo. I don't think he can. No. Uh, Andrew can. Andrew I think he's gonna be really improved. Crizzo if can. I, yeah, if Andrew is a you know a few pounds heavier on the bottom, like you said, right? And uh, But other than Andrew, is there anybody else? That can come in that's and a, Brandon Curry. I mean, that's that enigma. Right. Brandon Curry won, and it was second to uh, uh, Big Rami twice. It's uh, it's right there. It was just if he would nail it, hundred percent. Is he contender? Hell yes. I mean, look at this. Yeah. As uh, Jay said, that fullness, right? The uh, lot spread goes everywhere. It was just legs. I thought when he brings the legs, he loses the condition. When he brings the condition, he loses the legs. So can he find the balance? You know, that's the question. But hey, six guys can win. There's yeah. no so who who would think that uh, Jay Cutler 2001? Okay, if he did the predictions back in 2001, if anybody said uh, <laughs> Jay Cutler 
you know, first and second, you know, you, 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 you would kick them out of the podcast. What did, Jay, did I ever ask you, what did you think going into that show? Who's going to win? Um, you know what? I didn't know. I, you know, if I confidently said I was, I was coming, I mean, I went to every show thinking, I mean, in 99, I really thought I was going to be compared with Ronnie Coleman. I swear I did. Mm. Um, and I stood there without comparisons, you know, uh, but on 01, I, you know, like I came off that 2000 tour that we were on, Dennis, and I realized that, hey, I got to stand next to Ronnie. But, you know, you just don't know. I mean, luckily, I'm telling you, it was the luck of the draw. I drew 11 and Ronnie was 12 mm -hmm. in that show. So if I didn't have the opportunity to be in that lineup, standing next to Ronnie, and I looked so good from the front, right? The midsection was caved in and mm -hmm. I don't know. I would have got the shot, guys. Mm. I don't know if I would have got the calls, but when you when you're standing next, and Ronnie obviously had a little issue that year. I mean, from the front, he was beatable. From the back, he's Ronnie Coleman, mm. right? I still looked at it like you said, Dennis. You were fourth in 03. I was ecstatic to of be course. second. Yeah. So it was devastating when they called and said, "Hey, you failed the diuretic test." And we're going to take your $60,000 because that was the first large payday, right? I mean, think about it. 60 grand back then, guys. Like, that mm -hmm. was life-changing for me, right? Uh, and I said, no chance, you know? I was, no ex I, was I was ecstatic when I heard you failed the test. Yeah. Because <laughs> now I thought, I'm moving up into sixth place. <laughs> yeah, so I, uh, you know, they said, what, what are my options? And I... I told Wayne, you know, retest the samples, retest it, came back. You know, I flunked for five diuretics and he knows, knows, knows the math. Oh, I, I don't even know how that's possible. You're, you're ahead. How, in do you, you do you remember, do you remember what diuretics, remember, do you remember what diuretics you used back then? We can talk about yeah, it now. Aldact, aldactone diazide. That's it. That's it. Yeah. So diazide is, uh, uh, how to call it, diazide. Jay, your temples were so there's three. right here. But you, 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 like, tested, holy shit. <laughs> you tested positive for five. You know, we can, we can uh, find out whether the other I five. Lost, I lost 30 pounds in a week to dial in for that contest. Hmm. You Imagine were this, man. And I was too, okay. You were, you were, you were phenomenal. But you didn't even drink. Yeah, I, I stopped drinking days out. Yeah, just tiny, really? tiny sips. Yeah, super deep. I never was about that shit. Hell no. <laughs> I was I was laying on that floor back there on that cold floor, like oh my gosh, like <laughs> hell. And on that tour, Dennis, I was dying too. You know, I didn't drink because remember, in eighth, I placed eighth at the Olympia week prior, and I didn't look so good. So Chris, I'm like, Chris stayed with me, and he toured with me on that, and he's like. All right, we're just going to drag you down, mm -hmm. and I probably lost another fifteen pounds or something to do that tour with you guys. And I was super dehydrated there too. I was miserable, but that's always the best looks. Oh nine, I can tell you that I had to deplete fluids drastically, and I could barely eat. That was the most challenging part about why I don't miss competition is the dehydration process was brutal for me mm -hmm. because I always drank a lot leading up to the shows and I had a super dehydrate to look right. Otherwise I was watery. I had a water issue, honestly. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Yeah. But it's interesting. I mean, I mean, we all, all do this. Imagine a couple of days of not drinking and then topping off it. If it's just uh, two diuretics, not five. Uh, how do you still, you know, maintain that size? No, but was, he was because huge. I was, because I was 290 a week out and I, basically had a lot of packed fullness i feel that i was able to hold on to does that make sense uh, yeah i guess so i remember the, on, i remember coming back on the, on the plane from from europe for after that tour we were eating up every sandwich they had on that flight <laughs> Dude, i think dennis i think you told me you're never going to be, beat me again i think on that plane uh, maybe possibly possible <laughs> dennis i i swear no did you tell it's, me? it's possible i don't know I don't you remember. told me you go. You're never gonna beat me again. You yeah. told me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, was, that, that was the talk back then. Dude. Yeah, yeah, but th this wasn't this wasn't like an like an enemy talk. It was just like <laughs> it was just a motivational speech. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then he turned that shit around on me. <laughs> I remember. I remember. I remember uh, Aaron Baker was like that in France. Like he beat yeah. me in France, and he was like he was walking around like he was like. 
He won the goddamn Olympia and shit. I was like, this motherfucker, man. It's like, I can't believe it. And he was like, oh yeah, I got him. I, I, he's like, I'm, he was just like, he was just, I don't know, because I, I was a teenager and he was already you know, the top national competitor. And uh, I remember he was just, you know, crazy looking in the gym, but then, but I was beating him from the start. But then when he finally beat me, he was, he thought he was going to beat me forever. I was like, man, this is your only fucking time. You never play to the head of you. <laughs> I, was, I remember. You got to gotta say these things just to, you know, to, to get that, that, that motivation that you really need at the end of the day. It's all Jay love. Was, it's just a competition. They was like Elvis Presley. Yeah. <laughs> he was like Elvis Presley. Uh, he, got, gosh, he got I'm along a, with the brothers, but he was like, he was a white dude, but he had that crossover character. <laughs> I wish I, we could continue talking because there's so much we I, I wanted to ask, but we're going to have to wrap this up. Jake, Jay, I appreciate you coming I on. Would love to I know. Come on. I would love to come on after Olympia so we can see how close we were. So I, we no, I have something else for you, Jay. I'm okay. going to ask you now officially. Yeah, I didn't. We, I'm, we, I'm doing a podcast at the Olympia Expo in a glass booth with speakers outside, round table inside, so they can look inside, they can see us, and they can hear us through the speakers. So I'm doing a podcast on Friday, and I'm doing one on Saturday. It's going to be from 2 to 3. If you can make it, Saturday, we would have you on the round table where we can discuss prejudging. That that may be a little tough only because I think I'm I have two back to backs. Um mm. I'll have to ask Matt what the schedule is. But Friday, I'm not go, getting there till Friday night. I'm not even going to the, the, the prejudging. So do me a fa just, do me a favor. Let me know your schedule. Maybe we can work around your schedule. Okay. I would like to do it after 12, but I don't care what time. He yeah, wants to I, I, you and Ronnie. Yeah, I want to get you know whoever whoever's there, Ronnie, maybe Lee Haney. You know, I would love to, would love to do it if my schedule. Uh, yeah. I'm always there, you know, like yeah. I said, but for sure if you know that or you know, but make sure you have me back. You on. don't listen. You don't, and you don't have to be there the whole time. You can just jump in real quick if you walk past or whatever. Just 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 see if you can do it. If possible, we'll we'll try to work something out. But that's that's the thing where I want to talk about prejudging the night before. Okay. And then we'll all be already have a better idea who's really going to go out on top. All right? Thanks, yeah. guys. Jay, I appreciate you. Milos, Chris. Good to see you, Love you, you Love you, guys. All right. All right you all be safe. Up, man? Appreciate you guys. Bye.